When most people think about sports broadcasting, the first people they think about are the announcers. Of course, you know that the play-by-play, -play, color, and sideline announcers are only the most visible people in the production. But as such, they have a great responsibility to perform well and in a professional manner. One thing I'd like you to be keenly aware of, as a sports announcer, you are first and foremost a journalist. You are to gather information before the event and present that information, as well as the information you are gaining during the event to your audience so they can learn the stories within the story and the games within the game. If you want to be a good announcer, you are going to have to keep four things in mind. Step one, develop credibility. How do you do this? By being knowledgeable about the sport being played as well as the participants. If you want your audience to listen and appreciate your effort, you must do your homework, but more on this later. Step two, be honest. If a team is playing poorly, your audience knows it. It doesn't do for you to try to put lipstick on a pig. Similarly, give credit where credit is due. If Team A is out playing Team B, don't make excuses for Team B. If you are working for a network or a production house, this should not be a problem. It becomes more difficult if you are working for a school or you are the official broadcast crew for a particular team. Step three, be fair and accurate. This is a continuation of step two. Be fair to both teams, giving each equal attention. Also, also be sure to know the participants from both teams and be sure to have background information on both teams. When I did color commentary for Mules Football, I wanted to know how much information I could, about, I could about UCM and its opponents. This makes for a more complete, fair, and accurate production. Step 4. Inform and entertain. You are not a cheerleader, but you don't want to be boring and monotone either. Provide good information about what is happening on the field or court, remembering to be more detailed for radio than for television, and find some interesting backstories and statistics to plug in to give your broadcast some body. Remember, as a sports announcer, your first job is to educate the audience. If you're broadcasting for radio, you need to set the scene. For example, in football, you might say something like, the mules break the huddle. Empty backfield, three receivers to the right, one to the left. Jeff Phillips under center. Now your audience can picture in its mind's eye what is happening on the field. Also, tell who is in the game. Give the down and distance, balls and strikes, spot on the floor. Remember to say what yard line the offense is on or which direction they are going on the court. Of major importance, be sure to say the score and time left often. Some go so far as to say it's not too much to give this information every minute. You'll work in analysis whenever you have stoppage in play, but this must be quick. For television, it is much less important to paint the picture. Your audience can see what is happening, the score and time on the clock. But it now becomes more important to tell the stories, provide analysis, and discuss implications of the game or specific plays. If the mules get this first down, they can milk the clock. Northwest has not shown any ability to stop UCM's running game, so this play is critical. That sort of thing. Now let's talk a bit about the roles. The play-by-play -play announcer in radio and television takes the lead. He or she leads in and out of breaks, leads pre-game and post-game show, and drives the conversation. In radio, the play-by-play -play announcer does the bulk of the talking because he or she is the person who paints the picture and sets the scene. The color commentator, or color analyst, provides insight into what happened on a specific play, explains strategies employed, and on replays explains rulings on why things happened. You are the expert on the game. This is why so many professional color analysts are former players or coaches. If they are good announcers, their playing or coaching experience builds instant credibility. As you might have guessed, the color commentator plays much more of a role in television than in radio. Sideline reporters have become more and more popular. When I was a college student, they were used sparingly in football. Today, they are much more highly involved in all sports, and in some big games, there are often two sideline reporters. These individuals conduct interviews with players, coaches, and administrators, and explain rulings and details, provide updates on weather, weather, injuries, field conditions, and player mood. The sideline reporter's primary job is to add some emotion and reality to the broadcast because they are in the trenches. It requires you to do extensive amounts of homework, but at the same time be able to think quickly on your feet as things develop. One thing I want to stress here, ladies, you are not to be excluded as play-by-play -play or color commentators. If you know the game and have the chops, the speaking and presentation ability, go for it. Similarly, gentlemen, don't think that only females can be sideline reporters. Men can do this too, and often do. As a sideline reporter, or even as a play-by-play -play or color commentator who does interviews from the booth, here are some interviewing keys to remember. First, make sure your guests know how much time is allotted for the interview. 
They may have other engagements, so this is just polite. Second, explain the goals of the interview to the subject. Are you wanting the president to talk about his thoughts on homecoming? Do you want the GM to address a new signing? Is the star setter going to be asked for her offensive or defensive effort? Third, control the microphone. This means you hold it. This way, if your subject begins to ramble, you can pull it back and redirect the conversation. If you need to ask another question, you can get it in. Also, ask open-ended questions. These force your subject to, re to respond. If you ask, were you pleased with your team's effort? You may simply get, yes. And don't be afraid to ask tough questions, but do remember after a tough game or performance, emotions may be raw. Handle these questions delicately and be sure they need to be asked right now. Sixth, know the terminology of sports. For example, in baseball, a team scores 12 runs, not points. Ask the manager how his team managed to score so many points and he is likely to turn and walk away. You've instantly lost credibility with the coach, the team, and the audience. Do talk about big plays, but don't forget the plays that led to them, such as an offsides penalty on third and long early in the drive that kept the drive alive, leading to the go-ahead touchdown. And finally, go beyond the obvious. Yes, the team or individual is playing poorly. Why? What are they doing poorly? Bad base running? Not setting off, getting off screens? Is the tennis player slow to react? Is the golfer missing fairways? Give some depth. This is what your audience wants from you. A couple of keys for all announcers. First of all, work with the producer and director to develop a game plan and to unearth potential stories. Your director should have an idea of any storylines. A player is close to breaking a record. The coaches are recognizing cancer awareness by wearing tennis shoes with their suits. It's homecoming. Something like that. Second, and I cannot stress this enough, research, research, research. Study game notes looking for nuggets of information. Study media guides to learn historical information. Learn player names especially pronunciations and numbers. You may have to go to the athletic director, sports information director, or coaches for these. Learn strategies, style of play, and strengths and weaknesses, particularly versus the present team. Lots of announcers have standing appointments with the coaches they cover and may even watch game tape. Know your own statistics during the game. These are unofficial, but they will help you as the game moves along. Some colleges and most professional teams do have stat monitors and broadcast booths, but it's still a good habit to get into to keep your own stats. And you're probably going to start in high school anyway, where they don't give you stats. Develop a flip card system that works for you and make sure it's readable. I used to use manila folders for each game, placing the Mules offense and the visitors defense on one side, the Mules defense and the visitors offense on the other. I'd write in, this, write in the stats and key nuggets for each team and each player, and then I had most of the information I wanted at my fingertips. That's a good example on the slide. And here's another one. This is one I used when I did a softball game doing color commentary. This one I didn't use a uh, flip card. I just used the roster off the web page so I had their mug shots and I was able to write in some notes about each team. During baseball and softball, I keep my own scorebook. That way I know all the stats and the players and what they did last at bat each time they come up. I had a similar system for basketball, using their rosters and using a card so I could show where they took shots from. Do you have to have a world-class voice to be a sports announcer? No, but it sure helps. From a purely aesthetic point of view, some of the skills necessary include a good, clear voice. This includes the ability to enunciate clearly. It doesn't matter how great your call is or your, if your audience can't understand you. You also need to use proper grammar. It's not cute or clever to speak in poor grammar. It doesn't give you a down-home feel, and it isn't colorful. It is sloppy, lazy, and unprofessional and you need a good sense of timing. Pace yourself. If you are overly enthusiastic in your pregame show because you want to build audience interest, where are you going to go when the goalie makes a dazzling save? This also means you develop timing with your partner. For example, if you are providing color, learn to recognize when your play-by-play -play announcer is thrown into you for some analysis so you don't step on his or her call. Additionally, you need to have a sharp intellect and know details about the teams and the sport. Again, your first job is to educate the audience. This also will require an ability to think and adjust quickly. I've gone into a game where the other team didn't let us know the starting quarterback, a strong passer, was out. We prepped for that offense. They rolled out with a running quarterback and we had to adapt quickly. Finally, you need to develop a game plan. How will you go about gathering data? Remember, Saturday's game starts Monday. Work back from there to determine when you are going to uh, when are you are going to gather your information, watch game tape, 
make flip cards, whatever it is you do to get ready for the broadcast. How do you practice? First, whether you like to script your intro, pregame, or ad lib, I highly recommend scripting. Practice it. This is a public speaking opportunity. Then this and your intros and outros for commercial breaks will be smooth on game day. That's one less thing to worry about. Second, pick a game on TV, do some homework, prep like you are doing the game, and then turn down the volume, grab a recorder, and call the game. It's best to work with a partner. Third, take some vocal acting classes and interviewing classes. And fourth, join the speech and debate team. This is always useful for you. And finally, find a mentor, somebody who has practiced in this profession, and ask them for guidance. This from a pro. Go to a little league game, a high school game, or college game, and practice calling the action. You can even practice at a major league game. Sit in the upper deck, you may feel a bit conspicuous at first, and start polishing your approach. I used to turn down the TV sound and sharpen my play-by-play -play calls in my own living room. That is from NBC sportscaster Dick Enberg in How Does One Become a Sportscaster? It would be wise to take some advice from this wily old veteran. And this, too, from another sportscaster. I read his book this summer. No matter how accomplished a person may think he is when entering this business, studying whatever sport is going to be broadcast is still important. After all, preparation for broadcasting sports never ends. Bill Mercer, member of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame, former play-by-play -play announcer for the University of North Texas, the Texas Rangers, and the Dallas Cowboys. If you truly want to be a sports announcer, I recommend that you read as much as possible. These three articles here that I've given you would be a great place to start. Good luck and have a great call.